Hey everybody, good evening. I'm Ellen Lewis and this is your Crazy Few podcast. So I'm happy to be here tonight to talk to you about Entrelac. So I think Entrelac is really, really a cool technique and there's just so much that you can do with it. So I wanted to um, kind of go through sort of what Entrelac is and talk about, you know, all of the things that you can do besides just squares. So um, we do tend to think about entrelac just as, you know, accessory stuff that you make, a scarf or a wrap. It kind of, um, I'll share with you a little bit of um, my history of exposure to entrelac. So I had sort of seen it on and off in patterns when I first started knitting, and then I didn't I didn't see it again for a long time. And then in 2004, when they published um, Scarf Style, this standout garment from Scarf Style was the Lady Eleanor wrap. And I will show that to you here. It is. Hello. There we go. Okay, so this is the Lady Eleanor wrap. And isn't that beautiful? So we all fell in love with this wrap and um, I ended up knitting one in early 2005. I think that book came out in September of 2004 and I was looking for just the right yarn. But let me go ahead and show this to you on the big, big picture here. So this is, is it. And if you are not familiar with, um, with Entrelac, it's basically a, a way of creating this kind of a basket weave effect. You know, you think maybe it's just um, knit and purl, but you can see it's, it's all stockinette at this, in this example. And it's done, it's a very clever technique, and it's done by picking up, doing short rows, and then picking up along the edge, and you're working not one row, but a tier at a time. So I think it is very, very cool. Hi Gwen, it's nice to see you. So if you're watching and you have done anything in Entrelac, go ahead and tell me in the comments um, if, you've, if you've thought about it or kind of what your feelings are about Entrelac. So, so that's kind of what people think of when they think of Entrelac. They think of the Lady Eleanor. And you know, it really is a beautiful piece. I'll bring that back up again so you can see it. So, so there it is, and you can see why it kind of captured everybody's imagination um, back then. So I had just opened this store and I had to kind of real quick learn how to do entrelac because everybody and their brother wanted to learn how to do it and to make um, an entrelac something. Hey, Jal. Yeah, yeah, cool. Very fun stuff with, with entrelac. I want to talk about um, felting entrelac in a bit. So um, we actually had our first in-person um, class in the shop last Saturday, and it was an entrelac class, and that was so, so fun. And if you're interested in learning entrelac, we actually have a Zoom class coming up this Saturday, and there's a link in the description if you are interested or want more information about that. So very, very cool. So Lady Eleanor, and it kind of had its day, and everybody was doing um, entrelac in Noro Silk Garden. And it just seemed to be a match made in heaven because the way that the Silk Garden color repeats worked seemed to be perfectly aligned with the size of the entrelac rectangles in um, in the Lady Eleanor. So every little rectangle came out to be a different color. And it was quite spectacular and magical looking and everybody loved it and it was fabulous. I sold a lot of Silk Garden that year for the Lady Eleanor. Let's see. Yes, I bet you do, Gwen. I bet you do have that. It's, it's really lovely. So um, everybody was making it and like I said, um, Nora was a, a match made in heaven. And so we um, here's another one of the scarves. This is actually designed by my friend Sarah Keller, who owns a yarn store in Oregon. And that's, you know, really beautiful. So smaller than the Lady Eleanor, but still, you know, very, very nice display of the technique. And then um, 
So this is entrelac used in a blanket. This is the one um, that's in the Noro Blankets book. And it's, it's also very beautiful. This is worked in Ito. And you can see how the, um, the little squares, each one is kind of a different of the Ito colors. So it just really looks, I think, very, very pretty. We had a customer in the shop make five of these blankets. <laughs> She's quite prolific. So, and most recently we had this garment. I had this in a trunk show and it kind of reignited my passion for, um, you know, for entrelac. So that was really, really fun. And um, that is what a lot of people wanted to make when they took this class last Saturday. So very, very pretty. Let's see. Okay, so, but there's other stuff besides wraps. And I wanted to show you. So there's this, this cute little hat. And Jal mentioned making a felted bag in the entrelac, which is very, very cute. Um, you'll notice with the felting, it's perfect for entrelac because the way it felts, those little rectangles get squinched up in the felting process and they become little squares. Let me show you this. Um, this is kind of a useful. These hot pads, do you see how, um, how they felt into, rather than being you know um, a little bit longer, they just felt into little squares, which I think is really fun and wonderful. Um, and then of course there are felt, or entrelac gloves, which may or may not be the greatest idea. I know that there are also um, entrelac socks that you can do, but understand they're maybe not the most comfortable to wear because entrelac has all of these little um, pickup seams on the inside. So you might not want those for your, um, for your socks. But there are actually wonderful sweaters that you can do with entrelac, which I think is fun. So here is just kind of a really, really simple way to use entrelac. And you can see that what they've done here is create um, an entrelac panel. And they've just seamed that together with the rest of the sweater. So I think that's a really fun idea. Um, and I think it would also be very flattering. And you have a lot of flexibility, I think, that you could change. See, this is wider. Um, wouldn't that be pretty with the entrelac worked in the center and maybe the sides done in black? I think that would be very, very nice. So that's kind of a fun idea. But that just barely touches the tip of the iceberg on what you can do with this. So here's another example of a garment. Um, this one is worked in Noro. And there's not a lot of shaping on this. It's just a great big oversized entrelac jacket. And Noro is doing what Noro does, creating its magic with the entrelac. So that's kind of fun. Definitely a statement piece. So, and that you know, you can pick up against it and just very pretty. There it is in a different, a different colorway. So really nice. And then last season, um, Rowan, uh, mode at Rowan, actually <coughs> Quail Studio. I'm gonna have to close my door. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. My dog is responding to my son getting home from work. So um, anyway, they have used entrelac for the sleeves here. So that's kind of fun. Again, no shaping on this. It's basically just a rectangle and it comes down even to the cuff. But you don't have to do it that way. So here is another, I think this one's really beautiful, this coat. But again, it's just uh, a standard, a standard entrelac. Isn't that nice? I would definitely make that. But you can really change the look of it just by changing the scale. So do you see how this is just so incredibly oversized and very, very playful? And the squares are much, much larger, which I think makes it look maybe a little more playful and a little more fun. Um, but not necessarily. So I want you to look at this one, um, which I think is incredibly subtle and sophisticated. Let's look at that in the full screen so you can see it close up. I'll get that as close up as you can see it. 
can you see what I'm saying now? Isn't that, isn't that pretty? So this is just um, a very subtle version of entrelac with a much finer yarn that has been kind of blocked out. So you don't see quite the puffy characteristic that you do in this previous one. Do you see that? See that? This one has not been blocked at all. So the edges tend to kind of curl in a little bit where this other one has been blocked. Hi, Paula. Nice to see you. Hey, Barbara. Nice to see you. Yeah, isn't this, this is very elegant um, and pretty. This one is designed by Pearl Soho and it is made in um, a cashmere yarn that they carry, which is really very lovely. Um, and this one, this is, this is an oldish pattern. This came out, let's see, when did this come out? 2010, when Gwen Bortner did a whole book on entrelac. And I think this one is, is pretty, it's nice because of the colors, but you can see it's, it's worked in the round and it, it has almost a suggestion of a fair isle look, you know, with that, that yoke look. So I think that's really pretty too. And I bet you didn't know. Did, did you know that you could do sweaters and entrelac? Tell me in the comments if you already knew that. Because I'm curious. So, um, all right. So I think that one's nice. You can change the scale of the, um, the rectangles within the garment as well. So I like how this one has, has done that. So, you know, the squares start out very large here at the bottom. And then as you go up, you can see that the squares get smaller, which is a nice way to do shaping in entrelac. Um, this is a garment that actually I knit this one, and that's Ginny modeling it. Not a very great picture, um, but do you see how the squares are larger in the center? I guess you can't really tell on this one, but there's another picture here of a gal who, who did it. So you see how the squares are go much smaller as they go down, and then you're able to shape the sleeves by varying the, um, the size of the rectangles. You can get a, a very different look. So I think that's cool. All right, so there's that, there's that. Um, Again, you have a sweater, but look at this one. This one has um, a different stitch pattern. Do you see not only have they, they worked it in entrelac, but they've alternated stockinette and seed stitch. Let me see if I can get this closer. Maybe there's a better close up. Yeah, here you go. See how cute that is? So within the entrelac rectangles, they've done stockinette and seed stitch, which gives it a completely different look and you can definitely go kind of all out with that here's here's actually the original picture i think um, this one's worked in um, a hand dyed yarn so you can see that little it's, it's lighter so you can see the, the um the difference better so i think that's kind of fun and pretty do you guys like that one this is, I think, another very elegant example of um, working a different stitch pattern within the entrelac rectangles. Again, this is at a much larger scale. So each, each rectangle, you see you have your, your two base triangles. There's just two base triangles for the entire garment, rather than there being maybe 10 or 12 along the bottom. Each triangle is just larger, so you get a completely different effect. And this is worked in kind of um, a welting, and it even has a little bit of um, lace on that. Isn't that fun? Yeah, it's so fun. I think that's really great. All right. And, okay, this one I think is just stunning. This one is worked in ribbing. And you know how ribbing pulls in. So look at how the, um, the texture of, or the, the nature of that ribbing has created a completely different effect with this garment. Um, 
Isn't that fun? I want to have a look and see how many people have made this. There's just that one picture of it. So let's see who else has made it. No more pictures. Isn't that sad that there aren't any more pictures? But I do think that um, it looks so terribly intimidating, you know? But once you know how to do it, it's not intimidating at all. And you do have a lot of very fun options um, that take no extra effort. For example, this particular one, look at the bottom of it. You don't have the base triangles. Normally you start with base triangles and you pick up against them. But in this example, rather than picking up against a base triangle, they've just cast on and worked it. And then you get this um, really kind of pretty, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, that's not asymmetrical, but this, you know, the shaped hat on that. So I think that's pretty. Let's see. Never, okay. Yes, you did take that class, Karen. That was fun. So yeah, you absolutely should. I'm doing that Zoom class. If you are interested in doing that with us, we'd love to have you. Or maybe you can just go back um, to, the, to the worksheet that I gave you for the class and try it again on your own. So I think a lot of people, I had a woman in the class on Saturday. She said it was her fourth attempt at Entrelac. <laughs> but once you get it, you know, you get it. And it, it really just is sort of a mindset. You have to kind of do it and be... There's one thing to watch somebody do it, but I think you have to do it with them and have the stuff on your on your needles, and then um, then you really can get it. So I think that one's very pretty. Let's see, what do I have next? This might be a short podcast. Okay, so look how fun this is. This is a different stitch pattern, kind of to the extreme, huh? It's it's worked with um, lace, so you can see that they've done these four rectangles in a leaf lace pattern. How spectacular is that? <laughs> Talk about taking a, a scarf to the next level, huh? But, but this is a good example and you can really sort of see how, um, how the entrelac is constructed. You're gonna begin with these base triangles. You cast on and you work short rows until you have a triangle here and a triangle here. And then you build this side triangle um, with increases, and then you pick the stitches up as you work them. You work them together with the stitches here. So it's, it's really very fun um, to do. And you feel kind of really smart when you figure, figure it out. You're like, oh, okay. And you know, it does take a little bit to kind of get it, but, um, who would be interested in taking this to the next level? Jal, are you interested in something like that? Does that look fun? All right, so what else did I want to show you? Okay, so this I think is like super cool. This is what they call asymmetrical entrelac. And to be perfectly honest, I haven't actually done this before. Um, but I think it looks super cool. I didn't even know this was a thing you could do until I started hunting around for different entrelac patterns. But isn't that fun and beautiful? There are a bunch of pictures. Has she done it? Yep, on the front and the back. I love that. I think that is just so much fun. Let's see who else has done that. How many other projects? two projects. Let's have a look, shall we? Oh, that's cute. She made that kind of tunic length. Isn't that pretty? Yes, definitely looks challenging. Hi, Anne. Nice to see you. Yeah, entrelac is really fun, isn't it? Tell me what you've made in entrelac. I'd love to hear. So let's see. This one. That's cute. Oh, that's pretty. That looks like it's done in Noro. Yeah, I think that's a great, a great use of Noro. Very fun. I would like to try that, I think. Just because, <laughs> just to say that I had, had done it. I think that's really, really fun. 
Which is your favorite, people? Tell me which one you like best. Oh, and here they've done it. That's a great idea, turning it into a pillow just to kind of get the technique down. You know, that's always an option when you're, when you're trying out a new technique and you're not sure you want to make it into a garment. You can just put it into, um, you know, a, an accessory or a, a pillow. Just make a nice square. All right, and what was the last thing that I wanted to share with you guys? Okay, <laughs> this is fabulous. It's a dress. I love that. And I'm not sure what she's got going on here, but she's got something in the middle that it's just so pretty. And you can see that she's just done a beautiful job with shaping the neckline. She's obviously going to pick up against that later. But how beautiful is that? And she has done both things. She's changed the scale of her, um, her squares as she goes up to accommodate her waist. Isn't that just the most fabulous use of... Um, all of the entrelac techniques kind of together. I'm so impressed. All right, let's see what Anne has to say. Started a scarf with it and still am much to do. Aw, thank you. <laughs> it was a pleasure to see you. You should come back. We'd love to have you. Um, what a nice thing to say. Yeah, I did have two stores. That was very fun. That was fun. That's where, um, that's where I first met Karen. It's at the La Plata store. So super fun. So there were some other things that I pulled up on um, on Ravelry that I didn't. I'll just go through these real quick because we still have a little bit of time. So this is a fun one. Um, it's from that same book by Gwen Bortner, but you can see they've used entrelac at the bottom, changed the scale, and then put plain stockinette up here for the body, which is nice. Little vest. I've always wanted to make this little vest. I think that's really cute. I, I love the pointed edge, and I thought that would be just a really great um, kind of way to use the entrelac, so I like that a lot. This is very fun. Beautiful use of entrelac kind of as an accent. I think that's funny. Kind of sexy, huh? Sexy without being way sexy. Let's see if she's anybody else has made that. Nope. Yeah, I think that's beautiful. Another just long jacket. Very similar to the um, to the other one. It might even be the same pattern. Oh my goodness. So Julia Nichols, who is one of our lovely customers, this is the most elegant yarn in the whole world. It's called Touch Me by Munch, and it's a beautiful chenille. And the, um, the designer did this sweater in that chenille, and it has the incredible um, characteristic where if you wash it, it just gets this beautiful sort of crushed velvet look. And um, Julia did it in a lovely midnight blue. I talked to her the other day. She said, that is still my favorite sweater that I've ever knit. Isn't that pretty? Uh, I have, uh, to, truth be told, I have yarn for this pulled and stashed, and I just haven't done it. This is cute. This is by Yuni Jang. She used to be the editor of Interweave. Cute. Little um, little shrug. You can do a little capelet and skirts. I mean, who'd have thought? You know, I think this is a really pretty skirt. What she's done, and this also I think is by Gwen Bortner. Yeah, she's kind of the queen of entrelac. Um, this skirt, so what she did is she turned the entrelac on its side so that you get um, a different effect with, with the entrelac. So I think that's really cute. I can't tell if this is garter and stockinette or just stockinette. I think maybe garter. Let's see if there's another picture.
Yeah, that's worked in um, in garter stitch. So that's kind of fun and stretchy. I might do that one in seed stitch, I think, so that it would be maybe not quite so stretchy. But isn't that fun? Has anybody ever knit a skirt? I've knit a skirt, just one. Um, one of one of our gals from Tuesday night custom fit class makes a lot of skirts, and they're all just so cute. So what else did I have to show you? Okay, here's some guy sweaters. They've used the entrelac just in the front as a little accent. And here they've done kind of a, um, what do you call that, with the guy, where the, where the top of it is patterned. I can't remember. There's a name for it. Um, maybe somebody can put it in the chat. You know where you have like a... Um, the Aran cables and stuff right just up here for the man's sweater. I can't remember what that's called. It has a name. But that's fun. That's a Danish. Is it Danish? Yeah, Danish pattern. Very cute. Another little sweater with a green neck. So it actually is a really versatile, um, it's much more versatile than you than you think, you know, than you would imagine. This is from that same book as the one that I showed you in the Touch Me. This is also done an incredibly beautiful and luxurious darn called um, Wild, Wild One, Wild Thing, Neat Stuff, Wild Stuff. So we used to carry Wild Stuff in the store, which was great. So it's a um, it's a yarn that changes um, changes yarn. So it's all hand dyed, but it's a series of different yarns you know a lot of novelty yarns and silks and eyelash and just really really pretty things so again you get that effect of the um the yarn changing colors with the square so each square is its own little piece of something right so i think that's pretty all right, all right so i have to get out of here oh, Okay, so this is the last one. And again, this is from that same book, a very pretty three quarters. And look how they've added a cable in there, in, in, the, in between the entrelac sections. So, so many things that you can do with entrelac. Who knew, right? You know, I, I, I just think it's so amazing when you have a technique like that, and then you find that it's so versatile and there's just so many different things. And I hope that this has inspired you. So to, you know, to see all the different things that you can do with entrelac. Um, but you do have to start at the beginning just with a very simple stockinette um, swatch. I do mine with, um, with um, three little, little triangles we start with and then we just work up. And I think it's a, um, I think it's a good class you know if you wanted to continue with that you could make a little scarf or you could learn the technique and go off and make something something else you know a bigger wrap or or even a sweater so um i hope that you're inspired to maybe try entrelac and if you have worked entrelac before maybe you're inspired to go off road and do something a little more complicated and really play with the capabilities of entrelac so let's see what else I Yes, it beautiful in a blanket. Did you see that? Um, you have to go back and look at the be, the beginning, Paula, because we had a we showed the entrelac blanket, which was absolutely beautiful. So I know you guys have a life. I'm not going to run over tonight. So it was wonderful to be with you, and I thank you for sharing this time with me. I look forward to seeing you next time. Good night.